a few words about the agenda. I'm going to introduce case study method and uh, to describe what the main characteristic of the method is. Uh, I assume that some of you know about case studies and may use them and enrich your material, your teaching material. Uh, also, I would like to um, describe all the benefits for our students when we enable them to search a teaching technique, the description of the method, how we can design a lesson plan and what might be the characteristics of a lesson plan if we want to incorporate case studies inside. And after that, we're going to participate, you're going to participate as uh, maybe undergraduate higher students in a workshop so we can see the whole procedure and finding out the learning outcomes of uh, this case study method. Now, what is a case study? Case study method is an active form of instruction that focuses on a case and involves students learning by doing. It's actually narration. Maybe it might be a narration of a fact, an event, a problem, a dilemma. And also through case studies, we can conceive and our students can conceive more experiential theoretical and conceptual issues, not only re related to education, because case studies, uh, we use case studies in many fields, in business, in medicine, but for the purpose of education, we adjust case studies for educational reasons. Why to use a case study? What are the benefits for our students? As I said before, it's uh, learning by doing. So when we enable our students on case studies, then they are able, they are engaged in their learning. They gain greater engagement, deeper understanding of the concepts. They develop critical thinking and ability to make connections across content. And of course, they develop multiple perspectives through peers interaction because one main characteristic of the method is that the students need to be interacted among them and to discuss to negotiate and to give um, uh, their way of thinking according to the problem they face and of course all the above mentioned skills are very helpful for our students if we want to uh, be the future citizens of the 20th first century. Now, a case study consists of uh, mainly three parts. First of all, it's the opening paragraph. It's the opening paragraph that gives the topic of the problem, of the dilemma, of the real fact of the event. It follows by the body of the case, which gives all of the information, the value of information, so our students to be negotiate, to negotiate and the final part, and maybe the more important part, are the questions that we design on the case study. Because these questions will develop critical thinking for our students. Some indicative questions might be, what is the context of the problem? Or what would you recommend and why? Especially why? the reasoning and the justification is very crucial part of case studies and as you see after uh, on the workshop always i will ask of you to justify your choices all the time what features a case study uh, as a corpus might have it needs to be short to be short in time so our students to uh, have uh, the time in class to analyze and think about it, about the problem. Be controversial. So uh, we want them uh, to develop arguments and thinking. Have dialogue, has dialogue of course. Be relevant to the students, meaning that we need to find cases that are familiar, our students are familiar with 
and that they are belong to their social and cultural context, not something that are not, they are not aware of, but to know about the particular fact, have a dilemma to, uh, to solve, be contemporary, meaning that we take something from their uh, time or of uh, maybe from a newspaper or some media or a fact that already has been uh, revealed and of course reflect reality. At the same time our students need to, to be uh, aware about the learning objectives that should be addressed and also we need an educational message because uh, our students will be asked to generalize this message and this content to other situations, similar case studies, similar situations. Now, what is the target group uh, when we implement such a workshop? Undergraduate science students attending teaching certificate modules and especially educational psychology module, which is a, a, a main module for being teachers. So a case study about the moral development in adolescence and adulthood will be presented during this workshop. So we'll talk about morality, how children develop moral thinking and how you develop also moral thinking. The learning objectives, uh, our students want, need to understand and on, not only to understand but apply the key stages of moral development. They are able, they need to uh, cultivate empathy and understanding of different perspectives of their peers through interaction. They need to consider the circumstances and the social context that a moral decision is made because moral decisioning has to do with the circumstances all the time. And of course, they will reflect on their own moral development because when uh, someone is asking you, what do you think and what would you do if you were in Nico's shoes, for example, you need to be able to make a decision and at the same time to justify, so to reflect. Yeah, oh, more, okay. The scenario to be presented that you will see refers to a common classroom situations that I am sure that all of you as students in the past will face, have experienced. Presents a dilemma, is followed by an online questionnaire, a Google form questionnaire that you uh, will be asked to fill in and the results will be presented in class online. We will present the results here and a discussion will follow. The scenario at the same time when we run the workshop is available on the online platform so our students that are not physically presented in the class to have the ability to fill in the questionnaire, to interact remotely at their own pace and of course to receive the feedback uh, of uh, uh, of the discussion later on. The students answer positively or negatively, yes or no, on uh, close-ended questions uh, through their own electronic devices, considering the various aspects I referred to before, reflecting on their past experience and justifying the choices. At the end of the discussion, the students will be encouraged to apply the same uh, content knowledge to another similar situation and this is also as an evaluation indicator for us whether the learning objectives have been met. Now a few words about the moral development because otherwise you won't be able to understand the case study, it's just one slide. Uh, Kohlberg's theory a psychologist theory about moral development in children, in um, teenagers and adulthood, uh, described some, developed some moral dilemmas, conflicting situations that require a person to make a moral decision and he described three levels of uh, development, moral development, consisting of two stages each. 
But at the end, he concluded that the level of moral development is determined by the reason a person gives for making the decision, meaning it's not the crucial part, the main issue, it's not the decision, but it's the moral reasoning behind the decision. That's why I will ask you to justify every choice that you're going to make right now. Let's look at the case study and I would like to ask you, you're going to scan the, and I hope it works, the scanning, okay, and uh, you will be on a Google form environment with uh, four close-ended questions and one open-ended question, questions, question but before you fill in the questionnaire I would like to think very seriously uh, about each student's position each way of students uh, situation that you see in the questionnaire and try to imagine what the behavior of each student in elementary school in high school Nikos classmates uh, Nikos teachers might react and think about the dilemma so it's not answering as you as personalities but also <laughs> uh, you are trying to be in other shoes and this is uh, the main part of the workshop i would like also to invite and the students because this situation is common to the students also to participate and fill in the questionnaire because I would like to and appreciate your, you know, comments after all. Yeah. Okay. Now, is everything okay? Can you, uh, can you see the, the case study? Okay. And uh, you can, um, you will have uh, 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes for time limitation to fill in the questionnaire. And after that, to discuss it in class. Also, you can uh, discuss with your peers, if you want, before filling the questionnaire, about their opinion and what do they think. Okay, so have 10 minutes. If you have any inquiries or I want to specify something, please let me know. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Um, were you, I think you gave a bit of an instruction before you gave us the case study. Mm -hmm. Was it to like really just focus on Nico? Yeah, but from different points of view. Okay. You need to answer as a student in elementary, Oi. because the morality develops through the life span. That's, That's yeah, why. Perfect. Thank you. So we have already five responses. Okay. Nine. What do you think? Okay, uh, the persons that have already filled in the questionnaire. Okay, what do you think about the situation? Is it a real fact in a classroom or not? Have you experienced such a situation in your past years or not? So, what do you think? Yeah? I think uh, it is very true mm -hmm. because I... <laughs> yeah? Because um, I think it's very true because uh, I just taking words, okay. Do you uh, do you think that uh, the situ the behavior will be different when you're in a school context and different if you are in a university context or not? In university. I mean, as a student in the university, is it the same? Do you think that a university student might answer in the same way as a high school student, for example? Uh, yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. What about you? I would like 
I would like to catch your opinion before I reveal the results. What about if you have experienced such a situation, not only in school, but also at the university? And uh, what were your thoughts about such a character, for example? Yes, please. <laughs> Oh, this brings memories. <laughs> uh, that was my purpose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, I, when I was uh, in a senior high school, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was able to uh, pass the courses, most of them, uh, I had the matriculation exam. I've done more than enough courses to graduate. But uh, then about a week or three days before the... Uh, the B graduate, I noticed that I have missed one basic course that I should have been taken years and years on. So I was I just called the uh, the teacher and negotiated that uh, I completely forgot to participate in biology one. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, uh, we came in a conclusion that I joined the exam. I wrote my name down, and that was enough for me to pass the course, so that the university, the, the, they got the money, and uh, everybody was happy. <laughs> so, it's all about, life is all about uh, negotiation. Negotiation. Okay, so it's all about negotiation. Do you agree with a colleague, or do you have another opinion about it? Have you faced it in a different way? Um, I, I see a bit of difference, because the case is cheating, and this was openly discussing a mm -hmm. problem and getting a decision together for a solution. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's a slightly different situation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I also, when you were speaking, thought about one of my own situations in university that I also had to talk to a professor because I hadn't realized a course which I had to repeat. I needed the credits to continue to get my student aid. And as you've heard, I'm sure, the educational system in the U.S. is very expensive and I needed this aid. Mm -hmm. And I negotiated for some extra time to get the work done as well, just to like say that I also had a situation like that. So I can understand a student, because of our life experience, I think we can more put ourselves in the shoes of a student who has... Um, mm -hmm. A situation where it's not black and white, what's right exactly. or wrong. Exactly. There's a level of what is worse and mm -hmm. who is being helped the most mm -hmm. in which aspects. Exactly. The main part of the morality has to do with negotiating and to social circumstances that take place at that moment, as you referred before. So let's see if you have all of you fill in the questions. Let's see. Now, the, what do you answer? Let's see now your answers. Okay. Now. What do you think an elementary school student would answer? No. 80% of you answered no. It's not right for Nikos to cheat. Okay. And I would like now to tell me, most of you, why is it no? What was your way of thinking? And I'm talking about elementary school students. Okay? Yeah, please. Yes, at that age, children are told cheating is wrong. So they're just seeing mm -hmm. the cheating part and they're not thinking about any of the context that might surround it, mm -hmm. potentially. So. And how, and how do you think develop uh, the, um, the sense that it's wrong? Is Be it just... I think partly it's because they're told, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're told to do things in okay. an honest way or behave And they in need a to way. obey yeah. on a behavior that is told for them. Okay, yeah. perfect. And someone else that answers yes? Please? Uh, yeah, to me it's... Uh, I, I agree also with this idea, but it's that uh, the more you grow up, the more the world seems complex, mm -hmm. and you can uh, understand some uh, subtle, like subtle things, like social mm -hmm. or like precarity or like some difficulties you may face in life. So, <clears throat> I mean, also I was maybe <clears throat> picturing myself when I was in middle school. Maybe I would not understand why it would be changing, 
whereas later you can see some others that also face some difficulties so you can actually empathize uh, okay. with the situation and then be like, ah, okay, I understand. Do you think so. that that will happen on elementary school students or in higher education students? The empathize? Mm -hmm. No, more for later, like when you realize the, see your result here. The, like, that the world is more complex and it's tough what than you thought maybe? It's describing, exactly. Yeah, because now, now you're just divided, 50-50. Okay, 50 yes, it's correct. 50 no, it's not correct. I can accept um, uh, the argument of uh, Colleen that empathy is a very crucial thing during teenagers, teenaging years, okay? It's very important, as we say, after all. But also, I would like someone to justify me why no, why it's not correct for Nikos to cheat as a high school student. I, I was thinking about it from different perspectives, but one perspective could also be the student who puts in a lot of effort, mm -hmm. so the one who was being cheated from, well like... Yeah. If I put in so much effort, shouldn't I be rewarded my grade, but the other one not? Is that fair? Correct. Yeah. Well done. You just now, as you can see, reveal the moral stages by yourself. This is what happened with our students, because uh, this is an easy case study. It might be something more hard as a medical topic, for example, and things will be really uh, controversial and arguing. Okay, now... If we proceed and go to Nico's classmate, because now it's, it's a different situation. Nikos is not an unknown person, is a classmate of mine. I work with him and I cooperate all the time with him as in school and in class. So, 60% yes, 40% no. Why yes? Why most of you decide that Nikos, it's okay if he will cheat? Yeah? Uh, maybe they know his um, individual situation. Mm -hmm. They know um, his problems with his mother and something mm -hmm. like that. So they can empathize m more mm -hmm. than another high school student who doesn't okay. know his own situation mm -hmm. because it has to do with the communication and the friendly relation that might someone has with someone else and uh, also uh, do you think as Nico's classmate that this is correct do you agree on that there are two different things yeah uh, I would say that the uh Personally, uh, I would agree, but publicly, I would be against. It could be, it could be in a way, okay. depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you would be a teacher, you would ask me uh, in front of the class uh, mm -hmm. that uh, would it be okay? I would say no. But if if for some, I would be privately with with uh, with the peer students. Hey, everybody cheats. So, <laughs> okay. More of the story. <laughs> so it has to do with the social setting and the environment. Okay. Now, and of course, if you were Nico's teacher, of course, you say no, it's forbidden, because because why you say no, it's forbidden to cheat. I guess the teacher yeah. has the big picture and has everyone in the class in mind. So they're going to see the person who did study and prioritized it. And they're going to wonder why Nick didn't do the same thing, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Also, I guess their own integrity in some way or other is caught up in this. If they're okay with cheating, then what's the point of the test? Mm -hmm. Is it maybe okay. what they might think? Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't know uh, the t how the teacher thinks uh, because at some point I had a teacher and he was like, if you want to cheat, cheat, as long as you're not dis discovered by it. Yeah. 
So uh, it, it really depends. But also, of course, uh, if you want to cheat and you think that's the way to, to pass your exam, good for you. Uh, but so he was much more more open to those kind of things. But okay. uh, of course, other people are like, uh, no, we, we are not allowed to cheat or the, the students shouldn't cheat because they didn't learn uh, what we want them to learn. Uh, so I think it, uh, it depends very much also on what type of teacher you have and how open uh, that person looks at th those kind of problems. Okay. Because on the other side also, uh, we, we, we cheat every day because it's like we, we need to uh, find new information and it's like, okay, I don't know it, I just look it up right now and I have to use it. Uh, so in that respect also you can uh, ask the question is this the right way to examine again uh, maybe you should think about other types of assessment instead uh, because again there's so much information uh, we can't learn everything but we can kind of get a grasp uh, of, of how to deal with information okay thank you so much many dimensions as you can see and many variables in order to make a choice and make a decision and now the final question. Your yeah, the final uh, respond, which is your response. For Nico, it might be best in the long run. I would like an explanation for that, because um, oh, fail Nico. It might be best in the long run. Okay, so I agree that someone. Uh, I guess that meaning this meaning uh, this means that uh, fail it's uh, most uh, right rather than cheating and passing the exams. Firstly, say no to my boss, but else possibly fail for the temptation to cheat. Temptation, temptation to cheat. So another dimension. I would probably use all possible ethical means to pass this course. It great. Um, it's great, it's not important at all. However, if cheating helped Nikos to work and study in the future and thus to support his mother family, then it should not be penalized. Well done, a lot of empathy here. Cheat and hope later to have time to learn for exams where I have more interest and instinct motivation. In that situation, I would mostly like and use m some of other students' answer to help inspire need. I worked to do so because I feel that I am not on a level playing field given my, given my family circumstances. I work for money and because I am conscious I am not harming anyone, no life will be impacted negatively. I would like Colin sick to school and take extra time to study. I would lie over cheating. As you can see, most of the responses here agree that it's fine for Nikos to cheat. Am I right? Or I, I understood something wrong? Yeah? Let's see if there are other responses. I'm cheating. It's the final one. <laughs> so, all of you would proceed on cheating. That's amazing. That's really, would you like? Uh, oh, 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 sorry. Some more? Oh, yeah. Is it fair, Nico? It's fair, Nico? Not fair, Nico? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, mostly like cheat. Does Nick really need this exam graduation to become successful? In life, or does the education system need Nick to graduate in order to be funded by government? <laughs> I would negotiate with a teacher to find a way to create win-win situation. <laughs> well done. I'll keep the answers. I love it, the answers. I would cheat because I tried to do my best in all areas, but this whole situation was just too bad to handle without cheating. And finally, it depends. I would also cheat, but I would know that it is not good. But without wanting, uh, wanting to be student or pupil, it is involuntary to do so. So, most of you have a positive attitude on cheating. Let's see now if your responses illustrate moral stages of Kohlberg or not. Let's see now what Kohlberg said and how he described each 
moral stage. So we have we have yeah we have three moral levels. The first one, preconditional morality. It's actually an egocentric orientation. And children up to 10 years old think in a way of punishment, obedience, or what I'm going to win. So in stage one, behavior driven by avoiding punishment. If Nikos, uh, if Nikos is, not, uh, is caught cheating, he will be punished. Otherwise, it's correct, it's right. Nobody will see it, nobody will understand it. So it's fine for him. And at the same time, children think in a more um, market exchange way. What am I going to earn if I obey your rule? You give me a rule, but after that, you give me a reward because I did what you asked for me. So this is the moral development of elementary school students and elementary school age children. But as the development um, proceeds, I uh, approach uh, an upper level, conventional morality, which refers to students up to 20, not only, and uh, teenagers and adults up to 20 years old. In stage three, interpersonal harmony comes, arises. Right. Which means what? Right and wrong is according to my society, my community, my village, my town, my culture. So, if uh, behavior is driven by social approval, if my classmates agree on that, as you said before, that it's okay if you're cheating, I can approve of that, I have no problem with that, then Nikos needs to help his mother, so she's justified in cheating. But there is a contradictory, if you remember, in that stage, there was 50-50% uh, answers of your responses. But there is also a contradictory point of view. He should not cheat because people will think badly of him. So depending on your mentality and the way that you have, the, the principles that you have in order to decide uh, on conventional morality. Of course, in stage four, rules come up. Rules as behaviors, uh, rules uh, are given in our society to guide our behavior. So I need to obey a rule not because I will be punished but now because it is a rule and if I want to be in an organized society I need to respect the rules otherwise it won't be an organized society. So Nikos should not cheat because he violates the rule. Is it clear? And finally, in post-conventional morality, which refers to adulthood till our end of our lives, we have two stages. The social one is the social contract, meaning what? Behavior driven by a balance of social order and individual rights. Here it's the matter of negotiation that we referred before because we need to take into account a basic principle. Grades reflect performance. Sir Nikos should not cheat because he violates this principle. And in the final stage, that actually uh, few people uh, can uh, be on stage six, we talk about universal morality, universal principles. Are they universal principles or not? Are the people can understand and apply and work on universal principles? It's a very um, diverse um, issue here because if we want to talk about internal moral, moral principles, we need to justify it that they are actually exist. And this is very difficult to justify and to research on it. So Kohlberg, at his late writing, de-emphasized the last stage and said that few people can operate in this stage. So you just de-emphasize it. But if we want to keep an eye on Nikos' situation, Nikos and everyone else has the right to be educated and graduate. So needs to graduate and to be educated. So these are, in summary, 
moral development according to Kohlberg, and of course, the learning outcomes when our students, uh, when we enable our students to case studies like this before, are able to understand, not only to understand, but also to describe and reveal by themselves the moral development uh, through the lifespan. And of course, now it's easy for them to put themselves in other shoes and understand and evaluate others' perspectives, to consider of the social context every time and the circumstances that uh, uh, moral reasoning uh, is coming up, and of course to reflect on their own moral development and justify their choices. And if we want to sum up, what are the takeaway skills for our students where we, when we use uh, case studies? I'll see, I'll see the last uh, sentence. Active listening, active learning, critical thinking, decision making, communication and metacognition. So I would like to thank you all for your participation and I don't know if you have any questions for me. Uh, about the sixth stage, the last one, uh, you say that everyone has the right to be educated, and I completely agree with that. Mm. But I don't agree with that everyone should be allowed to get a degree in something, because of course it's still about the skills that you need to, to show in the end. So I think there's a slight difference between being able to, or yeah, having the right to be educated, mm -hmm. but uh, the right to actually get a degree is something else. Uh, just maybe that's what you meant but just for me as a clarification is that also how you see it or is it like okay i also agree that everyone should be allowed to get a degree at the end mm -hmm. uh, i mean uh, to graduate from secondary education that's what i mean yeah. okay to be and uh, in the final stage yeah if you go to your graduation degree then you're able to proceed and to be educated more in that case that was the way of thinking so yeah if there's okay, yeah. Another question. Um, I'm I'm just curious. Did have you heard or used um, Keegan's stages of adult development? So specifically for the adult continuing uh, to develop, have you heard of this no, no, one? No. Because as you were speaking, it reminded me of this one. Uh, as of Ericsson, maybe you, you a similar, of, of a similar similar Ericsson. I've heard as, as well. Ericsson, yeah, mm -hmm. but this is only for moral development. Yeah, yeah. there are of course many stages and uh, development according to the lifespan and other theories. Yeah, but we just checked this one because we want to see about the moral development okay. and the justification because the main reasoning, the main topic is the justification and uh, moral oh, okay. reasoning. That's and right. that last stage, again, just to clarify the universal mm -hmm. um, aspect, uh, universal you said aspect. maybe this doesn't exist. Does, mm -hmm. does that well, mean according, yeah, according socially to constructed according to cultural norms mm -hmm. as and opposed to universally human? Mm -hmm. Okay, if uh, we supposed or Kohlberg supposed that uh, some ethical, some ethics are common and um, inside the human being's way of thinking, mm -hmm. you know, from their born as they born, but this is something very difficult to be proved of and mm. to research on it mm. and don't forget that the social context and especially the culture mm. is something that goes aside next to it with morality mm. culture sometimes religion culture um, the way of uh, thinking it's also part of the moral development of each person so it is very difficult and confusing and he uh, they emphasize that at the end okay thank you <laughs>